Joining me now, Virginia Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger, a Democratic member of the House Foreign Affairs and Agriculture Committees. Congresswoman, with a welcome to you. Um, I just want to get your reaction to the death of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg as we start. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was an inspiration to so many of us. I cannot even begin to imagine the experiences and the drive that she had as a woman who entered one male-dominated field after another. I had a glimpse of that as I spent much of my professional career in more male-dominated fields, but nothing like she would have experienced. Uh, she's an inspiration to me. She blazed a path for so many of us who are in public service at this point in time. Uh, and I think she'll continue to be an example to generations of women like my three young daughters. I'm grateful for her service, her commitment to the law and to justice and to the example that she set. Yeah, and she did so from the very beginning. I'd like to remind our viewers that she graduated from law school, tied for first place among a sea of uh, fellow men that were studying there. Pretty remarkable, right from the start. Uh, let's turn Absolutely. now to early voting. Uh, it is now underway in your state. I know that you voted yesterday. Some Virginia voters say that Justice Ginsburg's death is motivating them to vote today. What impact do you see this having on the election? Do you think a lot of your constituents are going to vote early in person? Well, we saw across Virginia, in, we're reporting the Virginia Public Access Project is reporting about 27,000 Virginians voted yesterday, uh, which is tremendous. This is as a result of a law change that has now allowed for early voting without an excuse. And across the district uh, that I represent, there was engagement. There were people going to the polls, going to the registrars to vote. At the time that I voted in my home county of Henrico, uh, right outside of the city of Richmond, there were about 100 people in line. And reportedly, they had been there. Uh, people had been in steady streams starting at about 6 a.m. You know, I, I think that there is an a level of excitement and a level of enthusiasm that yesterday when I was at the polls, it was based on hope and a desire to create the continual process of change in our country. And I do think that the death of a woman, an incredible leader, an incredible uh, protector of the law, like Bruce Bader uh, Ginsburg, will continue to motivate people, remind people that their involvement uh, in our democracy is is so foundationally important. And ideally, they'll continue using their their vote as their voice, because the more people who are engaged in our democracy, the stronger it is. And I hope that in her honor, people will take on the civic responsibility of voting uh, and, and mm -hmm. utilize it. And in Virginia, we have a much longer period of time to for us to execute that right. Indeed, it's underway right now. Well, the fact is that uh, President Trump, as you well know, has run a months long campaign against mail in voting. As someone who worked at the Postal Inspection Service, do you have any concerns over mail-in voting as we are inching closer to the election? So I have had concerns about what Postmaster uh, General DeJoy had done, clearly taking steps to try and slow the process of the mail. But, you know, I bumped into a letter carrier the other day who was wearing his uniform. He was out uh, delivering mail, and he took off his hat and he showed it to me and said, you know, I show this to people. We are the United States Postal Service. We are a service. We help people. And he got very emotional at the idea that the president of the United States would imply in any way that he wouldn't faithfully uh, and dutifully bring someone's ballot from the point of pickup to the registrar's office to return it. And so I think it's so deeply unfortunate that the president has attempted to so distrust in something as uh, powerfully important as the United States mail. Um, I have faith in the people, the men and women who work in the United States Postal Service, but I do think that we have to recognize that the Postmaster General uh, and his efforts to undermine the Postal Service denying overtime, taking machines offline, uh, could potentially still have residual effects of delays. So anyone who is using the United States Postal Service to return their ballot, I would urge them uh, to return it in plenty of time, make sure that there is uh, ample time for that ballot to be returned uh, and, and, mm -hmm. and counted. And for some of us, like Virginians, we can also t return our ballots directly to a registrar if we want to make sure we're the ones hand delivering it. Yeah. I do want to, uh, before we let you go, talk about the coronavirus relief bill for a moment. It remains at an impasse. I know that you're among those who've spoken up to House Democratic leaders, stressing the urgent need for help. How is that message resonating with your colleagues? Well, when I spoke yes, when I spoke about the hope that was at the polls yesterday, 
the number one question that people brought to me as I was talking to people and meeting them, and some were very excited to be voting, but the number one po policy-related question was, are we going to get another deal? And I heard stories from constituents talking about the fact that they're not sure how they're going to make rent, and their roommate has been laid off, and now they're covering the rent for both of them, mm. and it's a hard time. Uh, you know, in our district, our food bank lines continue to get longer. Some of that's made national news. And what we worked on, there was a group of us, 25 Democrats, 25 Republicans, was a framework, a framework of programs that we could agree on, that we recognize are necessary to delivering aid to the American people, extended unemployment, PPP for our small businesses, direct payments to families and individuals, supports for our schools, supports to our state and local governments because we're facing layoffs across the country of some of our first responders, our police and our firefighters and sanitation workers. Um, and we agreed on a framework of a plan that has reducers and boosters recognizing that if we get this virus under control, the, the full amount of what it is that we may have to invest immediately might decrease. But in fact, if we continue to be on this trajectory where this virus is ravaging our communities, our schools maintain uh, their closures, and for public health purposes, we cannot return to a normal community, our people, our constituents, our communities will continue to need more help. We've garnered the support so far. We're at uh, 25 Democrats and 25 Republicans who initially uh, led this issue, the Problem Solvers Caucus bipartisan group. Uh, there's uh, coalitions within the House of Representatives that have already begun endorsing us. We've seen um, support coming out of the Senate. There's been a number of senators who've been quoted mm -hmm. positively speaking about the, the framework that we've introduced, uh, including Virginia's own Senator Tim Kaine. And so we're going to keep pushing because at this point in time, we we need White House leadership, the Senate leadership, and the House leadership to come back to the negotiating table. We've brought a framework. We hope it will be enough to get people back to the table, and we hope that we will be able to move forward on a vote for the relief and that the American people need, that our economy needs, uh, yeah. sooner than there, later. There Tomorrow are a would lot, be great. There are a lot of people who are weighing in and very much hoping for the same. Congresswoman uh, from Virginia, Abigail Spanberger, thank you 